Hello everyone and welcome to our part two lesson on intro to trig. Today we're going to use trigonometry to solve for unknown side lengths. Um, starting next week we'll start looking at using trig to find angles but we're going to be using trig to find a missing side in a right triangle. And so I have like a little list of steps right here for you and we'll model this as we go through it. But like we talked about yesterday, whenever we're finding these ratios and working with these ratios, we're always going to approach the triangle through one of the acute angles, a known length and an unknown side is what we're going to identify. We have to identify how that known and unknown side are related to the selected angle, either opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. And then based off of step two, that's going to tell you which trig ratio to use. So remember that we talked about sine, cosine, and tangent. Solve for the variable using the selected trig ratio. So Looking back to our calculator, our calculator has these three buttons on it. I'm going to be using this exact calculator. These are the ones we have in class. We have our sine button, we have our cosine button, and we have our tangent button all right there next to each other. And remember, the first thing we're always going to write on our um, notes in our assignments is, in our test, is going to be SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA. This helps me remember my ratios. Of course, O stands for opposite. H is hypotenuse. A is adjacent, H is hypotenuse, and O is opposite, and A is adjacent. And these sync up with those buttons, sine, cosine, and tangent. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom into this very first picture. This is a right triangle. And on this right triangle, I have a 90-degree angle, of course. But I also already have an angle labeled 41 degrees. I use this explanation in class. I always am going to use the one that's already there. That 41, that degree marking kind of looks like an eyeball. And so I draw in what I call, an, it's an arc, but I call it like an, it kind of is like an eyelid to look at this triangle through the perspective of the 41 degrees. Because through the perspective of 41 degrees, I have some missing pieces that I'm going to try to find. And I have to be able to label what's known and what is unknown. So what are we ultimately trying to find? We're trying to find what is the length of AB. So I'm going to put an X there. I'll also write that up here so you know that's what we're trying to solve for. So of these three pieces in this triangle, I have some things that are labeled and I have some things that are not labeled. So we're only going to worry about what is labeled. What is labeled is the 41 degree angle. That's how we're going to approach this triangle. The known side is the 6.1. 6.1 inches is known. It is going to lie opposite. So I'm going to label it. It's going to lie opposite our 41 degree angle. Our unknown side, what we're trying to find is X, so it can't be opposite, we've already used that. Is it going to be adjacent or hypotenuse? Well, in this right triangle, this is the hypotenuse, so I know it can't be the hypotenuse. It is going to be my adjacent piece, so A, D, J. The hypotenuse does not have a value labeled, and we um, are not trying to find that one. So I'm gonna be working with my opposite and my adjacent. So what trig function goes with opposite and adjacent? opposite and adjacent, the one that doesn't have an H in it, of course, is going to be our tangent. That's going to be our tangent. So the trig that we're going to use is our tangent ratio. Okay. So I always start with just a general setup um, to show your work. We are going to say that the tangent of whatever our angle is, the tangent of the angle, that's where I'm going to fill that in, the acute angle, is going to be equal to that angle's opposite over that angle's adjacent. So what was the angle that we were approaching this triangle from? That angle was 41 degrees. So the tangent of 41 degrees is equal to the opposite of that, which of course was 6.1, over the adjacent of that, which was x. Okay, so that's just our general setup. The tangent of the angle is equal to its opposite over its adjacent. So right now I have a fraction on the right-hand side. 6.1 over x is a fraction. I know that in order to um, solve a proportion, I can cross multiply, but unfortunately, as of now, tangent of 41 is not written as a fraction. But we can turn it into a fraction. We can always write over one. We can turn anything into a fraction by writing that it is over one. Why do I do that? Because that allows me to cross multiply. But I wanna slow down right here. This is something new I started this year. The first thing I want us to do is to anticipate before we even get started if I'm gonna be multiplying or dividing. So I'm trying to solve for x. That's my ultimate goal. I'm trying to get x by itself. And so when I cross multiply, the first thing I ask, is x going to be multiplied by 1 where it's already by itself? Or is it going to be attached to something? When I cross multiply, that's going to be x times the tangent of 41. So it is not going to be by itself on one side. It is going to be multiplied by the tangent of 41 degrees as of now. And I'm going to set that equal to 1 times 6.1. Why do I pause and ask myself that? Because I know what that ultimately means is I'm going to end up having to divide whatever it's attached to out on both sides. 
So since I want to get x by itself, I need to get rid of times the tangent of 41. So I'm going to divide this left-hand side by the tangent of 41, but I'm also going to have to divide the right-hand side by the tangent of 41 degrees. So this ultimately turns into a division problem, so it's a little bit more work. Those tangent of 41s cancel out. And once x is by itself, which it is, I'm going to type this expression into my calculator, 6.1 divided by the tangent of 41. So when you come up here, of course, that's going to be, you would type 6.1, so obviously 6.1 divided by tangent of 4, 1. So that's kind of how you type in those buttons. Um, I would just type that in that expression, so I'm typing that exact same thing to my calculator, 6.1 divided by tangent 41. This is what pops up on the screen if you're new at this, especially if you don't have your calculator at home. It looks like this, 6.1 divided by tan, it automatically puts a parenthesis right there for you, 41. Um, because that's where we're ending, we do not have to close the parenthesis, but you can if you want. I went ahead and just clicked enter. Now it does have a note that this should be in degrees. So if you're getting crazy answers, make sure it says that these are in degrees, okay? The way I remember that is that we're working with degrees. Whenever you click enter, you're going to get 7.0172 dot, 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 dot. And so um, I don't think it says what to round it to in the direction. So I'm going to have us round that to the nearest tenth for right now. And so that would round to 7 point. There's my tenth digit. That one tells me to stay at about 7.0. So I'm going to let them know that I rounded it by saying it's about 7.0. Something new that I added this year too, and we always say this to check it, but I'm gonna make sure I check every single problem because that is really going to help you to see if you've made a mistake or not. So if you accidentally you know, divided instead of multiplied or multiplied instead of divided, let's go actually put that in the picture. And so if my opposite piece was 6.1, would it make sense for my adjacent piece to be about 7.0 inches? And yes, that would make sense. It's also going to help you whenever you're um, working with a hypotenuse. Your value should be less if you're finding a leg or if you're finding a hypotenuse, um, your value should be more than the leg. Okay? So this is like an, uh, it's almost like a foreign language. Like when you first started doing one-step equations, I'm sure you remember thinking that they were really hard because all of a sudden it was something new. You had never done anything like that before with solving an equation. But now that you've done it over and over and over again, with, um, you've built onto it, and when you're doing a multi-step equation, the easiest part is doing the one step whenever you get down to that last step. And so it's going to be similar here. The more you do these, the better you're going to get at them. Okay? Uh, one thing I wanted to warn about is if you're typing this into your phone, the way you type this into your phone is different than the way you type this into your calculator. So we want to make sure that we're using a scientific calculator because, let's be honest, on an ACT and on a test, you're not going to be able to use your phone. So we want to get used to those calculator settings. If you need help with how to type it into a phone, let me know. You just kind of have to go backwards. Like when you type it in, you'd have to go 6.1 divided by 41 tangent, and it will calculate that for you before you click enter. All right, let's do the next one. This is a right triangle, so I wanna pay attention to that. It's a right triangle that contains an acute angle that is 20 degrees. Now, I, if I wanted to, I could go find that other angle. Like if I wanted to find angle P, I could, and I could approach this problem and get the exact same answer from um, approaching it from angle P. But why I have to do more work than I should? Angle, the uh, 20 degree angle is already there, so let's just work with what's there, okay? So from the 20 degree angle, I wanna find MP, so again, I'm going to put an X next to it. I want to find what MP is approximately. So I'm going to put an X there. So our known angle is the 20 degree angle. Our known side, the one that we have a number for, is 8.7 centimeters. That is going to be the hypotenuse. That is going to be the hypotenuse of this shape. So there's my hypotenuse. Okay. So that hypotenuse has already been used. That's another reason we do not approach the um, triangle from its right angle because its opposite would be the hypotenuse as well as the hypotenuse. That's why we approach it from that um, right, the, always the acute angles. What is our unknown side? Again, that's going to be x. It lies opposite that 20 degree angle. I knew it wasn't hypotenuse. It's not adjacent because it's not touching it. So the trig that I'm going to use, what goes with opposite and hypotenuse? Opposite and hypotenuse, the one that does not have an A in it, is going to be my sine ratio. S-I-N. So again, just a general setup, just like we did before. The sine of the angle, I'm going to fill that in, is going to be that angle's opposite over that angle's hypotenuse. So that's our ratio. And so we're just going to fill this in. What was our angle? How do we approach this triangle from the 20 degree angle? Its opposite was going to be, was X over its hypotenuse was 8.7. Again, we want to put this over one so that we can cross multiply. 
And the first thing I asked myself is, is X going to be by itself when I cross multiply? And do I multiply it times one? Or is it going to be attached to something? So X times one is just X. So thankfully here, when I cross multiply, I'm going to do that as this, this 8.7 times the sine of 20. I'm going to write the 8.7 as a coefficient so that those numbers are separated. Um, if not, there's a lot of extra buttons. You have to close the parentheses, and a lot of people forget to do that in their calculators. So I always think about it like this. I want to separate those numbers with the sign. The sign of 20 is going to be multiplied by 8.7. That's like saying I have $8.7 dollars instead of saying dollars 8.7. We like to write the coefficient out front, 8.7x instead of x 8.7. Um, it just is easier that way, and then your calculator is more calculator friendly when you do it that way. So that's our coefficient, and we want to multiply that by the sine of 20. So those get multiplied times each other. And again, like I said before, x is already by itself, so we get to literally just go ahead and type this in. A lot of you will get to the point where you look at a problem like this, and once you see that x is by itself as a cross product, you'll go ahead and just type in 8.7 times the sine of 20. So you only have to write this out as you're getting used to this. So again, we'll take that and we'll type it in, 8.7 times the sine of 20. Here's what that looks like on your calculator. Here's what pops up. I'm going to show you this a few times. You can write the time symbol. I do not. It under, your calculator understands that that's multiplication. It automatically puts a parenthesis there for you. And again, you can go ahead and just click enter. When you cl click enter, it's going to give you 2.975. If we wanted to round this to the nearest tenth, that's this digit right here. That seven tells me to round that up. So this is going to round to about 3.0. But I am going to show that this is rounded by putting approximately. I'm begging, begging, begging y'all. Please, please, please check yourself before you wreck yourself. Go back to that problem and make sure your answer makes sense. Immediately, I know since I'm finding a leg of the right triangle that this hypotenuse should be the biggest. So if I got anything more than 8.7, I would know that I did it wrong. So for instance, if you had accidentally done 8.7 divided by the sine of 20, you would have gotten 25.4 and you would catch yourself if you went back to the picture and said, okay, obviously I did something wrong. Maybe I needed to divide instead of, or multiply instead of divide. Um, so please, 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 that's going to be an excellent way to check yourself. Three centimeters does make sense in regards to the problem because that is less than the hypotenuse of 8.7. Okay, so we've done a sine example. We've done a tangent example. Let's see what comes up next. You can probably guess. Let's see. So I've got a, um, I'm approaching this triangle through the 38 degree lens, through the eyeball of the 38. Okay, so that is my good angle. The known side is 12.6. That known side, let's see, that known side is going to be my adjacent piece because here's my hypotenuse. That's the right angle across from the right angle. So the other thing that's touching it is the adjacent piece. It is shorter than that hypotenuse, okay? 12.6. And we want to know what is YZ. So I'm solving for YZ. I'm going to call that X. Um, so y, z actually is the hypotenuse. I'm going to put an x there, lowercase x. So that is, what is the x? It is what we just said. It's the hypotenuse. So that is unknown side is the hypotenuse. Our known side was the adjacent. So what trig function goes with adjacent and hypotenuse and has nothing to do with the opposite? That is going to be our cosine. So this is our last example. Okay. So let's um, go to do this. This is going to be our cosine button. We used our sine on this one. And we're using our cosine on this one, and you all have already seen an example of tangent. So again, general setup, just like we did before. The cosine of the angle, that's where you fill it in, is going to be that angle's adjacent over that angle's hypotenuse. So let's fill it in. The cosine of 38 degrees is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 12.6 over x. It has to be in that order. You can't reverse that and make it x over 12.6 because the ratio is it's adjacent to its hypotenuse. Again, we're going to put this over 1 and cross multiply. So we're going to pause there and say, okay, when I cross multiply, is x being multiplied by 1 or is it going to be attached to something? It's going to be attached to this cosine of 38 by multiplication. So immediately I know what that means in, uh, for the end game is that when I do this, 1 times 12.6 is 12.6, I'm going to have to end up dividing. I'm going to have to end up dividing by the cosine of 38 because x is not currently by itself. So to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by the cos cosine of 38 so that it cancels out on the left-hand side. And what I ultimately type into my calculator is 12.6 divided by cosine of 38. 12.6 divided by cosine 38. Again, I'm going to write this uh, one last time just so you can see this example. 
Um, when you type that in, make sure you're using the division symbol. We're not multiplying here. So I'm going to switch to yellow so y'all can see it well. 12.6 divided by cosine 38. That parenthesis will pop up for you. 15.989. We purposefully gave y'all some that you needed to work on your rounding. Um, this year a little bit more, and so this would this eight tells you to round this up, and instead of fifteen point nine eight, this is going to round up to about sixteen. About sixteen. I'm begging y'all to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Let's go see. Does that make sense as an answer? If X is about sixteen, is that more than the twelve point six centimeters that was the leg? Yes, it was. So I know that that is a good answer, even if I'm wrong. That answer it makes logical sense. All right, so I'm only going to do two of these. I can, um, I can share the key with you, or I, I can go over these in class with you if you need help. Um, but just for the purposes of keeping this short and sweet, we're going to do two of these together. So what happens when you don't have all these steps like this in the middle? This is where you actually get to start practicing. Solve for the indicated side length, and then it does tell me what to round to. We're going to continue to round to the nearest tenth on these problems. So the first thing I notice is that it wants me to find side df. So I'm going to go put a variable on that in the picture and put an x there. So who am I approaching this triangle through? Through the lens of the 51 degree angle. So through 51 degrees eyes. From 51, what pieces are labeled? We're not going to label the pieces that don't have anything there. So the 17 is going to be the opposite of the 51, whereas the X is going to be the hypotenuse. Again, that is always going to be the same in every right triangle, no matter how you approach it. It's always across from the right angle. So what piece goes with opposite and hypotenuse? That is going to be sine. So the sine of 51 degrees is equal to its opposite over its hypotenuse. That's going to be 17 over x. Okay. Again, we put this over 1. We're going to cross multiply. Unfortunately, it is going to be attached to the sine of 51 when I cross multiply. So that's going to be x times the sine of 51 degrees equals 17 when I cross multiply. So we know that ultimately what's going to happen is that I'm going to have to divide by the sine of 51. So as you catch on to that and you see what happens, you can, you can kind of flip-flop that x and sine of 51. So 17 divided by the sine of 51 to the nearest tenth is going to give me approximately 21.9. Does that make sense as an answer? Is that more than 17? Yes, it is. All right, let's do this again. ST, where's ST at? ST is right here. So I'm approaching this triangle through the lens of the 42 degree angle, through this 42. What is X? And then what is 9.5? Well, the 9.5 is the easiest to work with because we know that it's the longest side in that triangle. It's across from the right angle, so that makes it my height man, my hypotenuse, whereas the X is going to be also touching that, so we know it's going to be adjacent. We are missing the opposite. There's nothing there for the opposite, so I'm not going to label that. So what goes with my adjacent and my hypotenuse? That is going to be our cosine function. Cosine of 42 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So that has to be x over 9.5. We cannot reverse that. Again, put it over 1 and cross multiply. And when I do that, that makes me happy. Less work, less is more. x times 1 is x. That's going to be equal to the coefficient of 9.5 times cosine of 42 when I cross multiply. So 9.5 times cosine of 42 is going to be approximately 7.1. Does that make sense as an answer? Let's see. 7.1 is less than 9.5. We have time. I'll do these quickly. I'm about to talk fast. So through the lens of 18. 18, I've got this piece is going to be my opposite. What am I solving for? BC. So I'm going to throw an X here. What is that? Well, it's not my hypotenuse, so what does it have to be? It has to be my adjacent. What trig function goes with opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So the tangent of 18 degrees is equal to its opposite, which was 12, over its adjacent, which was x. Again, we put this over 1. We're going to cross multiply. Sadly, x is going to be attached to the tangent of um, 18, so I know that ultimately what I'm going to do is 12 divided by that. So I divide both sides by the tangent of 18, tangent of 18, 12 divided by the tangent of 18 is going to be about 36.9. Does that make sense as an answer? 36.9, that is the other leg. So let's go put that in there. 36.9, and yes, that does make sense. All right, so let's do this one last time. Last one, best one, uh, 27 degrees. 
We are solving for JL. JL is right here. So I know that since this is 27, this X piece is going to be the opposite of their unknown piece. What is the 13.6? The 13.6 is the, ooh, not, a, not adjacent. Here's my hypotenuse because it's across from this right angle. So this is going to be my hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So the sine of 27 degrees equals up opposite x over hypotenuse 13.6. I put this over 1 to cross multiply, and thankfully, x is already going to be by itself, so it's going to be a multiplication of 13.6 times the sine of 27. 13.6 times the sine of 27 is going to be about 6.2. Check yourself before you wreck yourself about 6.2. That is, in fact, less than the hypotenuse of 13.6. Y'all can do hard things. Y'all are doing hard things. I know that this looks like a different language, but you get better and better and better at it the more you immerse yourself in it and the more you practice it. Hope you're having a great day.